it's the spooky season, All Hallows Eve, prime haunting hours, and so you know what that means. Look, I've always been wanting to Christmas, okay? Alright, so I want to talk about Luigi's Mansion, a game I have admittedly never played before. Okay, so like, I've played the sequel, Dark Moon, on the 3DS a long time ago as a kid, and when they announced that they would be remaking the original Luigi's Mansion for 3DS, I planned on getting that because I enjoyed Dark Moon. Needless to say, I never ended up getting it. Luigi's Mansion was never a game I considered to be on my backlog, more of a game that I really want to play someday because of how popular it is. I consider it to be one of those absolute classic Nintendo games that you should just really get around to experiencing. And with Halloween right around the corner, about to remind me that we're only two months away from the new year, why not check out Nintendo's first game starring the one, the only, Green Mario. Okay, a uh, second game starring Green Mario. Luigi's Mansion was quite the interesting game at release. Traditionally, Nintendo would launch their new consoles with a Mario game, and while Luigi's Mansion is a Mario game, it doesn't star Red Luigi as you would come to expect. This was a bold move, launch a new system without a traditional Mario platformer, instead using the sidekick character in a completely new style of gameplay. I think it's safe to say that Luigi's Mansion's gamble of changing things up would pay off in the end and was successful, but it was a risky move nonetheless. But I'm not interested in the background of this game, usually I like to talk about the background of games because I've played those games before and researching the development and history is a way for me to learn something new. But I haven't played Luigi's Mansion, so just playing the game is learning new things. All I know is that Red Luigi gets kidnapped and Green Mario has to save him. And there's ghosts and booze? Apparently they're different? So I'm no stranger to horror games, and while it's not my favorite genre, in fact far from it, I do enjoy a good spook every once in a while, especially with multiplayer horror games like Phasmophobia. That game is almost always a good time. But I think it is important to say that Luigi's Mansion is not a scary game- oh, Okay, okay, uh, let me rephrase. Most of Luigi's Mansion is not a scary game. Despite the name and what you may expect, besides the amazing settings and tones of this game, Luigi's Mansion is actually an action-adventure game, not a horror game. You control Luigi as you explore the different rooms and floors of the mansion. The sequel games would come to expand on this by making the maps bigger, as well as implementing more environmental puzzles throughout the mansions. There is a ton you can interact with in the mansion, and if you poke around enough, you will find secrets and goodies all over the place. The goal is to, obviously, expunge the mansion of all the ghosts, but the secondary goal is to collect as much material riches as you can. I'm talking coins, gold bars, and cold hard cash. Depending on how much money you have collected at the end of the game dictates the specific ending you will receive. Also, a little bit into the game, you will accidentally free a bunch of booze into the mansion, and this will require you to travel back to previous rooms that you have explored before to find the hidden boo. There is a total of 50 boos, and you will need to find at least 40 of them to beat the game. But that's pretty much the general overview of the game, so what's it like to actually play? You'll start out in the mansion with just a flashlight, and not too long in, you will start to see that things aren't quite normal in this place. After the first ghost encounter, you will meet up with Professor Egad, who will evolve into a fan-favorite character in the future games, and oddly ties into a lot of early 2000s Mario franchise lore. Like, Egad being the one to create Mario's Flood and Bowser Jr.'s paintbrush? But I digress. The biggest thing to take away from this is that you will receive the Poltergust 3000 to capture the ghosts, as well as a Game Boy Horror. This acts as your mini-map and menu. After this, you're pretty much set free to explore the first area of the mansion as you please. You are only limited to where you can explore based on what keys you have to open which doors. So you are forced to explore rooms the game only wants you to explore for the time being. Obviously, you can backtrack later and eventually explore the full mansion, but starting out, it's a bit limited. The overall structure of the game is quite simple, and that being that you would typically enter a room, be confronted by some ghosts, where you have to use some sort of strategy and planning to suck them all up. And once all the ghosts have been defeated, the room will be cleared and the lights will turn on. I really enjoy the different types of ghosts, and they all have tons of personality. In later Luigi Mansion games, the ghosts really get stripped down to simple personalities with limited character on them. There really is just something special about the uniqueness and charm of the original ghosts that this game has. Every so often you will end up encountering a boss ghost that cannot be defeated with traditional means. You either have to take a picture of their heart and have the Game Boy Horror explain how to expose their weakness, or just experiment around and find out yourself. These bosses are all really creative and a lot of fun. 
Some of the interactions with these boss ghosts are a lot of fun and almost make you feel bad for having to suck them up and turn them back into paintings to contain them. One of my favorites is early on in the game and it's a musical ghost who plays the piano. If you hit all the instruments in the room, it will start to play the original Super Mario Bros. theme, and when you go to talk to the ghost, she starts to play the underwater theme in Super Mario Bros. on the piano, and then will ask you what the composer was thinking about while writing that song. Of course, the nerd I am instantly recognized the song, so I have no clue what happens if you get that answer wrong. I mean, you have to fight the boss regardless, so if I had to guess, not much is different. Overall, I feel it's a bit formulaic, but with the different ghost types and how unique each boss fight feels, it doesn't really get that old. In fact, I actually found myself wanting to keep going to see what the next new ghost type or what the next boss was. While being a bit formulaic, the formula is very fun. And the difficulty is done just right. It never felt like I was thrown into a situation way tougher than I felt like I could handle. The main objective is to obviously hunt down all the ghosts and portrait ghosts in the mansion, but as I mentioned before, we kinda accidentally let loose a whole slew of booze. These surprisingly turned out to be my favorite thing to hunt down. They slowly get more and more health for the later ones that you encounter in further rooms into the mansion, and while it can be frustrating at times, if you fail to fully capture a boo in one room, you run the risk of it going through the wall and into another. It's really fun to go hunt them down and finish them off. The bosses are all very creative to fight, and while some are kind of frustrating, it's always so satisfying to finally capture them, especially if you went through an experimental phase trying to find out their weakness. There are a few optional bosses as well that you could ignore, but going out of your way to capture them will net you a load of cash. And as well as optional bosses, there are also optional rooms that you could seek out. Now I tried to do all of the bosses that I could, but I didn't go out of my way to visit every single room, so who knows what's in those. Probably some sort of cash if I had to guess. Overall, there isn't too much that I can say about the gameplay or map. It's all pretty much a lot of the same once you get going. But like I said, it's still very fun to play through. There are a few rooms, especially later on in the mansion, that have some very creative themes going on. Like a room full of just ice, or a graveyard for some reason. But my favorite room easily had to be the observatory room, where you open up a rift in space or something and blow up the moon and end up walking across a magical space dust pathway to find Mario's lost power star. This game gets weird sometimes, and I'm all here for it. The main antagonist is eventually revealed to be King Boo, who is the one responsible for sealing away Mario in his painting. He really isn't a part of the story or gameplay until the very end when you have to confront him, although there is this one time where you can encounter King Boo and have a casual conversation with him right outside his hidden shrine. That's kind of funny. But once you do end up defeating most of the portrait ghosts and capture at least 40 Boos, you can grab the key to unlock King Boo's hidden shrine room and confront him for capturing Mario. This leads into the final boss, where you have to go up against King Boo, but it's really more like you're going up against a giant Bowser. King Boo takes control of a Bowser suit who will spit fire, try to suck you up, throw spike balls at you, and just run around the arena. When he throws these spike balls at you, you will need to suck them up with your Poltergust and throw them back to Bowser when his head is low. This will blow up Bowser's head, releasing King Boo, causing him to become vulnerable for attack. And while this may all sound simple enough, I struggled way too much with this fight. I said earlier that the game has a very good difficulty curve and never really throws you into a situation that you don't feel prepared for. Well, that's still completely true all the way up until now. Bowser's attacks do so much damage. One small slip up could cost you the entire fight. I had to try multiple attempts before I managed to win finally. It's a great boss fight, and when it was all said and done, I enjoyed it. But this is where you can tell that Luigi Mansion is not a combat centric game. So with King Boo finally defeated, I was feeling pretty confident in myself when I finished the game, thinking I had collected tons of money and would get the good ending. Nope! I got one of the worst endings you could possibly get, with the others being so bad you practically have to avoid getting money. I ended up getting rank F, but there are two ranks lower than that, so I guess I could have done worse? Regardless, the game was still a lot of fun. Quite short, however. I managed to play through the whole game in two short sittings. And this is a lot of people's complaints about the game, it's just too short overall. But I think if the game was longer, it would have gotten way too repetitive. That said, however, while some people complain about the game being too short, I think that makes it even easier to recommend to people. 
future games in the series would end up being at least twice as long, so if you are new to Luigi's Mansion and want to check it out with the minimal time investment, the original is perfect for that. Also, most people consider the original Luigi's Mansion to be the best in the series, and while I somewhat disagree with that, I can totally see why. Overall, I very much enjoyed this game and had a lot of fun with it. I'm glad that I finally got around to experiencing this game and getting to see what it's all about. Totally worth the hype this game gets. Also, I just thought of this, but throughout the mansion you have to find things that Mario dropped, like his hat, gloves, and shoes for example. But in the painting he's trapped in, he's wearing all of those. So did he like, have extras on him? Does going into the painting put you into some sort of default design of who you are? Did King Boo deliberately draw him like that? Are the paintings actually painted, or is this just a representation of the captured? I'm obviously putting way too much thought into this, but I just still can't believe they made a whole game series based on that one Smash Brothers map. 